Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you guys remember some time back, I released a video showing how to get the trouble codes out of the ECU by turning the key you know, on, off, on, off, and on. And it you know, blinked the lights out, just showing you how to get the trouble codes out. Well, it turned out to be a bad map sensor code. Well, with that being said, what I did not do was I didn't tell you guys about I didn't show you guys how to test the map sensor. The only thing I did is show you guys the trouble code and I said, okay, it's a map sensor. I changed it out and, there, and the world was good. It actually was a map sensor. Well, the Jeep's been running like a top. It's running great you now here lately. Uh, so I thought, you know, wait a minute. I should show you guys how to actually test the map sensor. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. All right. We've got three different wires here coming off the map sensor. This wire right here is your input at five volts going in over here on this side the very this other side over here is your ground wire here is your signal wire signal wire going back to the uh, ECU the computer telling the computer hey this is how much vacuum signal because this is your vacuum line here going to your intake that vacuum signal varies the voltage inside here or on this on the sender wire here on the sensor wire it varies the voltage and tells the motor no it tells the uh, computer the engine's under this much load, it's got that much load, whatever, and it varies all the you know, uh, timing and inject and uh, fuel parameters adjusting to what it needs for the, uh, for the demand. Okay, I've moved the multimeter over here, and let me go turn the key on. You want the key turned on, not running, You're just the key turned on. I'll be right back. Okay, keys turned on, all the dash lights just light up, and that's all you're after. And what we're looking at here, take the end of your probe here, and you're going to put it up inside this one right here. It's the first thing you want to check. And look right there. 5.16 volts, close enough. You know you got input voltage. If you do not have input voltage, you've got another problem somewhere downstream of that uh, wire. All right, now next thing we're going to check. Pull this out, put it in here. 4.86 volts, which is close enough to 5 volts, which is good. And like I said, this right here is over here is your ground. If you test both of these and you're testing, you got 5 volts here, and you've tested 4.85 here, you're good to go. So it should mean your ground's good also. Because I've got the ground over here on the battery post. So, now what we're going to do is, since we're going to leave the wire right here in the uh, testing, uh, the sender probe here, we're going to disconnect the vacuum line. Now I've got my little handy dandy vacuum pump here that I used to uh, like bleed brakes with and stuff. We'll hook it up to this. Now mind you, watch if you, well, you guys can't see it or feel it, whatever, but this uh, hose is a little bit of a loose fit on that right there, so I mean, it may have a little bit of leak down, but not bad. So here's what we're going to do. I want to tell you how, let's see if we can get a voltage here. We've got voltage. Uh, if I can get focus on the gauge. Alright, watch what happens. I'm going to put a little vacuum to it. I'm going to put about 10 pounds pull on it. Oh, 10 inches of pound, 10 inches of vacuum. See, it dropped at 3.98, and you see it's bleeding down because, like I told you, that vacuum line doesn't fit that um, fit the uh, start, shoot that sensor right. So therefore, it's kind of leaking down, and the voltage is going high, which still means that the sensor is good. All right, let's put a little bit more vacuum on it. Let's go to 10 inches. And yeah, okay, so it's a little more 10 inches. But see, it drops to 2.7. So it's testing correctly. I tested the vacuum signal coming to that port, and it was running at 17 inches of vacuum, which is about right there. And that's about where it read, 1.58 volts. So at idle, if the world is good, we see that that vacuum is bleeding. Dang, I can't talk today. You see that the vacuum is bleeding down on both the gauge here and on the multimeter. But the point behind it is, even if it it's bleeding down, it looks like it's, yeah, there it goes. I thought it stopped. Anyway, point is, you see that it's working. I apply a vacuum here, it changes the output voltage of this wire right here, which is going to the ECU, 
and the ECU adjusts the uh, parameters for the motors to tell you how much timing or how much fuel it needs by the vacuum signal. So that's how you test. There you go, that's how you test that map sensor. Now that wasn't that hard, was it? Just because it's got some wires and stuff like that, don't let that crap in, and uh, just don't let it intimidate you. The beauty of these little YJs are, yes, they're fuel injected. Uh, yes, they got sensors. Yes, they got a little computer, but they're not that hard to diagnose. So don't let a few sensors and computers really freak you out. Trust me, it's not the big deal. Uh, map sensor has three wires, one vacuum line, three wires being five volt in, ground, and five volt reference. Reference meaning it's referencing how much uh, vacuum signal is being applied to it. And it's going to bury the voltage sending it to the ECU. Not rocket science. Negatively to the battery, to the negative electrode, negative lead of your uh, multimeter to the negative post of your battery. Probe your three wires with the key on, not running. Find your five volt input. Then your next one in line should be 4.87 or thereabouts. Then just gonna have your ground. Um, pretty strap and simple. Really, can you test without a, a, a vacuum pump? Okay, yeah, technically you could because you would have you no know, just with the key on with the engine not running. You're gonna have like 4.87 volts or something like that to your uh, reference wire going to your ECU. Uh, then you start the vehicle up, make sure your leads are out of the way. Make sure your uh, multimeter leads are out of the way and not in the way of the fan or anything. Um, simple because, well, duh, if it gets caught in a fan, if it don't damage something in the vehicle, it'll probably sling back and hit you, so please be safe, be careful. Uh, whenever the engine starts up, it's going to pull a hard vacuum on that map sensor, it's going to drop it down to 1.8 volts or somewhere in that ballpark. But what you don't know is, if you use the engine to test the map sensor, is the between the 1.8 volts and the, five, and the 5 volts or 4.8 whatever that you're reading off that reference wire, you don't know if the sweep between the two voltages is steady. The way you test that is by using that vacuum pump and you pull a 5 inch vacuum, how much does the voltage drop and does it stay steady? Pull 10 inches of vacuum on that map sensor. The voltage drops. Does it stay steady? Pull 15 inches. Voltage drops. Does it stay steady? And if you check your voltage signal, if you've got 17 inches of vacuum coming off the manifold, pull it to 17 inches and see what your voltage is and see if it reads like it should. Now, if it stays at 1.8 or whatever like mine did, you're good to go. If it stays steady. That's how you check the sweep of the map sensor. Just like a throttle position sensor, it can be great at idle, or it can be great wide open throttle, you know, when you're sweeping the throttle back and forth. But that doesn't mean in between all that, that everything's good. So, really it's best to have the little vacuum pump and the multimeter to test your things. Pretty simple. If you don't have a vacuum pump, what it is is a uh, brake bleeder kit. And if you don't have one of those, I'll put a link down there in the description so that way you guys can have one. If you want to order one, that is. And the multimeter, most everybody has one of those. If you don't, I'll put a link down there to a good one for you. Uh, so, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's what I want to tell you guys about. You guys watch my videos. You take notes. You go outside. You take, you work on your Jeep. That's all cool, and I really appreciate that. And that, and I'm, I, I'm sure from the comments I've been feeding, the feedback I'm getting from everybody, that y'all appreciate that. But I'm working on something else. Um, these videos are great on YouTube. But I'm also working on a website that's going to go along with my YouTube videos. I'm not going to tell you what the URL is yet or the, the address to the website. When I do, I'll put it right across there. Um, but I'm going to have downloadable instructions to where it says step one, test this, step two, test that, step three, test that. I said downloadable, actually, you just click a button and it prints them out for you, what it boils down to. So when that's ready, I'll put that link up there and then all the rest of my videos too, I'll put it in the description below with a link to, uh, to my website that you guys can get. See the same videos you see on YouTube, but have printable instructions and plus a lot of other facts and fun tips and mods and who knows what else I'll come up with. You guys give me some ideas what you'd like to see on the website. Give me some ideas. Uh, so with all that being said, I want to say thank you for the subscribes I've been getting, thank you for the likes I've been getting, and thank you for the shares that's been going on really appreciate that. That shows me I'm doing the right thing for everybody. So, in closing of this, everybody, thanks for everything y'all been doing for me. Thanks for all the comments. And so if you like this video, thumbs up. 
share it out to everybody help every, spread the knowledge help everyone out and subscribe if you haven't subscribed come on don't forget so everybody have a great day peace out see y'all